put a fine group of people here this morning. Amen. I'll tell you. I'm so glad you're here. This morning, we're going to be in 1st Timothy. And uh, the title of my sermon is Staying True. Staying True. You know, when people come forward for salvation and we baptize them and they join the church, so many times the church will say to them, all right, you go sit in that pew now and we'll see you in a few years and see if you've grown any at all. We'll check on you, maybe maybe two or three years, or maybe, maybe sooner if you guys want to talk to us. But I tell you this, through all that, it's still the individual's responsibility to stay true. True to what? True to the Word of God. Amen? Amen. All right, let's open up with a word of prayer. Father God, as we open your word here this morning, I just pray, God, that we can quiet our hearts and minds, that, Lord, that we'll get the fullness of what you would want us to learn this morning. Thank you for the examples that you give us in your word, Lord. And, Father, I just ask now that we can just, just uh, glean whatever you, it is you want us to learn. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In the book of 1 Timothy, Paul, in the age, an experienced apostle writes to his young pastor, this young pastor. Now, he's a young man, you know, uh, and he didn't have no great seminary teaching. He didn't have no, you know where he learned mostly about God? Home, his home. His mom was a Christian, but she was Jewish. She taught about Jesus. His grandma was the same thing. So he said, I can't teach my children. I can't teach my grandchildren. You know, you ever have your grandparents or your mom and dad read your stories? Huh? They'd get the book out, a book, I don't know what book they would read for you, but they would read a story maybe at nighttime or maybe sitting when the evening you shut the TV off because there's nothing but garbage on the TV anyway. And you know what they say, garbage in, garbage out. So you have to be careful what you're putting in there. But sit down and read your children or grandchildren a Bible story. Read them a Bible story. Teach them about God. It's going to be amazing, the results that you see. Because the Bible says that if you raise a child up the way he should go, when he he's old, he will not depart. Oh, I know some of them God walked away, you know, and they said, well, but well, one day I'll tell you this, they'll come back. The Bible says so. That's God's word. They will come back. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. God will bring them back. Ephesus, where uh, Timothy uh, is preaching at, was a city famous for its temples and worship of the goddess Diana. Its temple employed prostitutes, priestess, priests who offered sacrifices for money. In 1 Timothy, Paul urges Timothy to stay true to the uh, midst of all his paganism and all around him. You know, and that's one of the things today we look at. Well, I'm a Christian, yet I live in the world. I'm in the world, but yet I'm not part of the world. This is, world is not my home. I'm only passing through. My home lies up somewhere beyond the blue. I love that song. We need to remember that, yes, the world is trying to take you away from Christ. It's trying to turn you. It's trying to corrupt your thinking. Oh man, I tell you what, talking to people about Christ and some of the weird thoughts that they have concerning Christ, it's scary. I don't know where they came from. I think maybe they spent too much time alone with a Marvel comic book or something because they weren't really reading the Bible. Uh, and so if you read God's Word, just, uh, just read it. I don't care if it's just one, one verse in a day. I don't care. 
But you need to just take and make sure that you, you understand what you read. Don't just skim over it, but understand the words that it's saying. Well, to, uh, Paul, we're going to look at several charges or instructions to a young Timothy in this epistle. <clears throat> now, I want to emphasize, I'm saying young Timothy. Some of you young folks sitting up there, you know, you think, ah, oh, they don't, they don't, I'm just young, they don't pay any attention to me. I want you to know something, young folks. One day, one of you will be standing up behind this pulpit, maybe. One of them will be up here leading your music like Michael. Teaches Sunday school classes here. We need teachers now to start new classes. So if you're thinking about it and you'd like to help, let me know. Or let Michael know. All right? Well, the first one, the first chart here is found in chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. And it says this, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, to Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace uh, from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. And it says then, no other doctrine, no other doctrine should come. And as I urge you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they may teach no other doctrine. We need to have people that are trying to, to, to teach their false doctrines to stop it. Stop it right now and start preaching the true doctrine, the Word of God. You don't have to take and try and dumb it down for people to understand. Just teach the Word of God as it's written, and the people will say, you know what? That makes sense to me now. I understand that. That's the Word of God. It's not somebody's thoughts. It's not somebody's idea. It's not somebody's trying to, it's trying to change it so it don't offend, offend anybody. But you know what? The Bible says God's word is sharper than a two-edged sword, and it'll cut clean to the bone. Amen. But the truth will make you free, it says. You shall know the truth, and it will make you free. People are lying to people just to see what they can get. Money-wise, position-wise, power. You know, you don't believe me, watch television a little bit. you see what I'm talking about. We need the truth today. We need men, women, boys, and girls to stand up and say, God's word says this. He said it, I believe it, and it sells it for me. Not, well, uh, it didn't really mean that. It, that's not what it says. No, read God's word. If it says it, it God meant it. Amen? Amen. Christians today need staying power. <coughs> not to be wishy-washy, not to be like a wave on the ocean. But especially in our increasing pagan society, you know, this morning we studied about uh, Elijah and, and, and all the Baal worship prophets. While they, they tried to do a sacrifice with a bull, and now they tried and they danced for hours, cut themselves and everything, tried to get Baal to come down and burn up this, because uh, Elijah says uh, no matches allowed on the scene. So, but then Elijah got up there and just said simply, you are God. And a little prayer he said, and then the fire fell down from heaven. That's what we need today. We need fire falling from heaven. We need to have this doorpost of the sanctuary shaken when we pray. We need to understand that we're praying to a mighty, powerful God, not some maybe he's up there i don't know for sure i'm not no he's there he wants to hear from his children if you don't talk to your dad mom and dad on this earth what do you think will happen yeah that's right they want they want to hear from you but god wants to hear from you more he wants to know if his children are okay in this time of all this controversy all right, the second one here now is the second chart is found in chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. And it says, This charge I commit to you, uh, uh, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. That's right, warfare, warfare. 
I'm not talking about just uh, going out there and just mouthing something. I'm talking about we're in a warfare with the devil. We, you know, are you in the, are you in the battle? Or are you just sitting by watching? Amen. You know, it's like kind of like football. You know, football. I love watching football, but most of the people that are cheering up in the stands, the ones down on the field are really ones playing the game. They're down there playing hard. So I say this to you: Get off the bench. Get in the game. Get in the warfare with for on God's side. The devil's been trying to push us around long enough, trying to make us look like we're silly Christian. You know, but look at that silly Christian. He's a Jesus freak. You know, you bet I am. I am a Jesus freak. I love Jesus. And I'm not afraid to tell anybody I love Jesus. Amen? Amen? All right, verse 19. Having faith and a good conscience, with some having rejected concerning the faith, have uh, suffered shipwreck. They've suffered calamity in their lives because they're following a false god. Just like uh, Jezebel was trying to get the whole country of Israel to turn from God and turn to Baal. I'm telling you what, we've got false gods all around us in here in this world today. People are trying to promote it. They're trying to say, that you don't need to worship God. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to have fellowship. You don't need to pray. You know, the devil don't mind you coming into a building and sitting down, you know, but don't you pray, you know, and really, he doesn't like hymns either because they're singing praises to the Lord. So he tried to stop you doing that. But like Michael said, I want you to know, four o'clock, four o'clock today, you folks up there on the internet, four o'clock today, we're gonna to have choir practice here. I'd like to see this filled back up here. We got your nice comfortable seats now too. When I sat up there before, I was in a plastic chair. And I tell you, by the end of the service, it was really praying for peace. It was awful up there. But now, come on, we we'll just come on here and Michael just gonna lead the choir, and just Things are going to be fun. All right. Christians today need staying power, especially in our increasing pagan society. I read that for the second time because we live in a pagan society. We live in a country today where they're trying to wipe out our history. They're trying to wipe out our past because the people that control the past will control the future. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to change this world that we're living in. This beautiful world that God created for us. They're trying to mess up. What's it called? Woke? What is it? Anybody know what woke stands for? I don't. I mean, it stands for trouble as far as I can see, but I don't know what else. Uh, I don't know anything good it stands for, that's for sure. All right. War, uh, wars are, it's a good war. We're in a good war. We're in the right side. We will win. Don't shipwreck your faith, though. Don't shipwreck your faith. After the initial uh, euphoria of conversion, many Christians uh, uh, sooner or later are confronted with the old desires of the old life. What do you do when that happens? I'll tell you. Before I became a Christian, before I turned my life over to the Lord, I was on Satan's side. I want you to know that now. And if you're sitting out there today, and out there in your homes, watching us on the internet, if you're sitting out there today, and you've never, never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, guess who you're serving? You can't help it. You can't help it. But you made a decision. You said, I don't want to make that decision today. Well, you've already made the decision. You're going to follow Satan. Because when this life ends, when we close these eyes in death, there's one or two places you're going. Heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. You know, and I know that's pretty hard, but you say, well, how can a loving God send, some, send me to hell? Because you know what? He's not sending you. You should have made that decision. You made that choice for that trip. So like Timothy, we need to stay true. We need to stay strong in the faith. Oh, well. The third charge is found in chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. So these things I will write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. For if I uh, am delayed, I write so that you may know that you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, 
which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great in the mysteries of godliness, God will manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached by the Gentiles, believed in the world, and received up in glory. That's my God. That was Jesus. You know, when he rose from the grave, he didn't just hide. He was seen, I think, by over 500 people seen Jesus after he arose from the dead, from the grave. So you know what that means? You know what that means? Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, and all the other Confucius-isms isms, are in the grave. Their bones rotted in the grave. But Jesus is in heaven alive. My Jesus is alive. Did you know that? He's not some used to be. He's not talked about in past tense. He's talked about in the now and now. He's alive. He's making an intercessory prayer for you and I. And I tell you, it's just when you've got somebody like Jesus praying for you, you've got a strong prayer partner. Amen? You know, I, I tell you, uh, people ask me, you know, we, we pray, will you pray for me? Well, sure, I'll pray for you. But you know what? If they go to Jesus, they're going directly to the power now. They're going directly, because they don't have to go through me. No, you don't have to go through me. You go directly to God yourself. And But the first prayer, if you don't know him, the first prayer he'll want to hear from you is this. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I need you in my life. That's the first prayer he wants to hear from you. And then you got a direct line to the Almighty God. You got a direct line to the God that created this world. You got a direct line to God that hung all the stars in space. You got a direct line to God that hung that, that Polaris, that star up here that we used to use for navigating. That's a star that he gave us to, so we can always know where we're at. What a wonderful God we have. Chapters 2 and 3 deal with public worship. Now we believe uh, in the church. In uh, verse 16, it talked about our ultimate purpose is to exalt Jesus in all that we do. Public worship as well as private worship. And then, the private, let me tell you this little bit about that. Years ago, it used to be in families, Christian families, in the evening when the work was done, they would all sit around, dad or mom would get the Bible down. They'd have a little prayer time called family altar. That's what it was called then, I guess it still is. And they would pray for different people and for themselves as a family. They didn't have no video games then. They didn't have the TV on or the radio on. They were talking to God and God alone. I think I would be so wonderful if families would start doing that again. Just, you don't have to be a big elaborate thing. Just read a verse or two, however you want, and then pray to God. Teach your children how important prayer is as they're growing up. Yes, stay true to your worship. The fourth charge is found in verse, uh, excuse me, chapter five, verses 21 to 25. And it says, charge you, uh, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things uh, without prejudice, doing me uh, nothing with uh, partiality, do not lay hands on anyone for, uh, hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, uh, but use a little wine if your stomach's sake. You frequent uh, infirmities. In verse 24, some people's sins are clearly for evident, 
preceding them to judgment. But those of some men follow uh, later. Verse 25, likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident that those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. Sometimes we get an opportunity to bless someone. I don't mean material-wise, maybe it's just sometimes, you know, say, listen, you really have a good presence in the community, a good Christian presence. Just thank someone sometimes. I, I, you know what I'm hearing a lot about? To, you know, what I'm hearing a lot today in the stores and in the, the checkout places and that, they'll say, have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Isn't that, that's so simple, have a blessed day. But when I hear it, it lifts me up. It lifts me up. And I say, thank you, I am having a wonderful blessed day. Isn't it simple? Show people, God is foremost in our life. Oh, they say, well, that's you, preacher. Do you get paid for it? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I love God. I love Jesus. He's my Lord and my Savior. And I know one day I'll be with Him in heaven. I have that promise in His Word. And if it's in His Word, folks, you can take it to the bank and write checks on it if you want. But don't be a pew potato. I like that I put that down here. Don't be a pew potato. You heard about a couch potato. But you don't want to be a pew potato. A Sunday morning Christian. Sunday morning Christian. Not to laying on in hands, though. Don't be in any hurry. When I was ordained, the first ordination I went through was when I was ordained a deacon. And uh, I had to come to my church at that time and had to kneel down front. And all the ordained men of the church came forward and laid hands on me and prayed for me. They did the same thing when I went into the ministry. The ordained men come and laid their hands on me and prayed for me. That meant a lot to me. And you know, and I'll never forget that very special time. Folks, so many times we somebody comes into the church and right away they 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 say you know what how strong they are and what a great Christians they are and, and all that but I tell you uh, the Bible says when somebody joins the church don't make them a deacon quickly observe them before you do that and I truly believe in that. I truly believe in that. All right. Here is the uh, four, yeah the sixth chart. I'll get it right here. I jumped from fourth to fifth. Whatever. The fifth chart. <laughs> my Roman numerals isn't very good. I put down six. <laughs> the fifth chart is found in chapter six, verses twenty and twenty-one. Old Timothy, guard what was committed to you. In your to your trust, avoid profane and idle blabbing and contra contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge by professing and some that state concerning the faith. Grace be unto you, amen. I remember when I was in the service in the evening, we sat around the barracks, we didn't have nothing else to do, so we started arguing about religion. I didn't know a thing about it. Christ. I didn't know anything about religion, but boy, I could sure put up a good argument. I had those guys off Buffalo, you know. I just thought I really knew the Bible. I didn't know anything about the Bible. All I knew was that you carried it to church. When at the church I was going to at the time, you didn't even have to open it. Just carry it and it looked good, you know. And carry it back home. Put it on the shelf again until next Sunday. It's not one of the important part of my life. But I'll tell you what, after I accepted the Lord, this, this Bible became so important to me. I just couldn't, I, I was hungry. I was starving for God's Word. I just wanted to read it and read it. And not only read it, but I wanted to understand it. I wanted to know what God was saying to me because I know this was a love letter written by God to me. 
You folks can read the letter too if you want. I mean, it was a community open letter, but it was really written just to me. Huh? I felt that way. Some of the time, some of what I read in there was just so beautiful. Through the hard times, it was very precious to me. When I lost my wife to cancer, God's word became very special to me. I just couldn't read it enough. I needed to understand why. God says, I got it taken care of. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Folks, God loves you, and so do we. I just pray that we'll continue to grow together because this is, Christianity is not a destination. It's a journey we're on. We're walking that journey together. So one day, we'll all be together in heaven. I don't know if any of you ever heard of the singer Ray Bowles, but he's got a song I just love. Thank you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. He talks about a man who went to heaven and saw his old Sunday school teacher up there. And he's thanking her, thanking him for the time he spent preparing his lessons and teaching the children. Thank you for giving to the Lord. There's this one thing I want to hear when I get there, when I see Jesus. I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Wouldn't you love to hear that from the Lord? Well, if you're sitting here today and you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, we can take care of that for you today. During this invitation, you'll be able to come on down front here, and we'll show you what it means in God's Word. Now, not our opinions, or even God's Word, what it says in the Bible, on how to be saved. And we'll show you, and then, you, if you're able, you can follow and believe in baptism. And well, folks, that's the start of the journey. That's the first step. So if you can, don't let anything hold you back in your seat. Maybe you come here to join the church. Join the church and help us out here. We've got a lot of work to do here at Fountain. A lot of work needs to be done here. And you know what? We need your help. God needs your help. Because we're his hands and his feet in this world. We need to be able to do it. I don't know what God's doing in your hearts right now. I don't know what you're dealing with. But folks, we're here to help you any way we can. This is a loving church. We want to make sure that you understand that. Wow, kids. Father God, as we come to the close of the service now, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you'd be with us. Lord, if there be someone here that needs you for whatever reason, I just pray, God, that they'd get up out of their seats and come down front here and we'll take care of it, Lord, for them. Maybe it's for prayer. Maybe it's to join the church. You know, maybe it's for salvation. Whatever it is, Father, I just pray that nothing would be able to hold them back. God, thank you for all you're doing here. Lord, and I just pray Father, that you continue to bless the churches the way you're doing. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you're able, will you please stand for the invitation? Mm -hmm.